Hi, it's Rob from The Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint Miramon Banshees. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Deepkin Flesh. We're going to be using this to do the overall capey part, the bit that goes over the head and is flowing off down the back there. So you're going to give both sides of that a good coat of Deepkin Flesh. You're also going to use this on the arms as well. This was originally the first night ornament figure that I tried to paint years ago when it first came out and I made a total hash of it, didn't like it. So I've been putting off this one for a long, long time, but I'm happy with how it turned out. It may not be perfect, but it's, it's good enough for the tabletop by far. So next up, we're going to be using some Citadel Apothecary White Contrast and some Citadel Nihilac Oxide. I'm going to start working on doing the ethyl parts of this cloak here. So we start by putting on a good coat of the Apothecary White. And once you've got that on, we're going to put a little bit of Nihilac Oxide in there and start making part of this blue. Now, I do try and do it in stages, so do the back of the cloak, work on that, and then work on the front of the cloak. But I'll be putting up a video of how to do the, the full start to finish on the ethyl parts over the next week or two. So with that back part done, we're now going to use some Citadel Nighthawk Gloom, Nihilac Oxide and Apothecary White to do the skirt area on the front of this. So again, like before, we're starting with some Citadel Apothecary White, making this go all the way up to the top. Then we're going to add some Nihilac Oxide about halfway up and sort of spread that up there a little bit. And finally, we're going to use some Nighthawk Gloom at the very, very top of this and darken that up. Now the idea is to get the darker shades as they go down it into the recesses so that the lighter areas are on top. But again, there will be another video on how to do the full thing of that coming up at the weekend. Once we've finished on the front there, we're now just going to use some Nihilac Oxide to smooth off the crests of these ridges down to the bottom. Because once you've finished doing all the shades and using them like washes and doing a little bit of blending with them, they will be a little bit rough around the edges, so you can tidy those up with the Nihilac Oxide now. Again, this will be part of the video, which once it's put up, I'll link it here. So now that we've got all the shades and stuff done, we're going to move on to Citadel Deepkin Flesh once more. We're going to start highlighting the areas at the bottom of the ethyl parts on the skirt. You're going to spread this up to the top, getting thinner and thinner, with a little highlight at the very, very top of the skirt. And you're going to lighten the section down here where you've got all that apothecary white. You're going to lighten that up a little bit on the crests and the ridges on the skirt. Then we're going to do the same on the back using a little bit of Citadel Deepkin Flesh. Now this one was put together a bit badly, you can see down the side there, there's a bit of a gap going on. So all I'm going to do as I'm painting this is making sure that whatever colour is either side of that gap spreads through the gap and it makes that a lot less obvious. I could use a little bit of filler to fill that in and then repaint it, but for the amount of times it'll probably see the light of day of the tabletop, I don't really think that's worth it right now. I'm going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Deepkin Flesh, lighten that up a little bit, and then I'm just going to do a highlight on the ethereal areas of the skirt. This is just like highlighting normally, only you're not going to try and get it on the areas that would just be catching the light, because it's a bit ghostly. You can highlight these on all of the crests, whether they're underneath or not, because you do want to get it to have that kind of unnatural glow and unnatural highlight. Now we're just going to use a little bit of pure Vallejo White to do the final highlights on this ethereal skirt part at the front. So you're doing a little tiny highlight at the top there. And down the bottom too. What the white does is really gives it that kind of gleaming, almost glowing effect. 
which brings about all the highlights and makes it look like there is a bit of ghostly goings on there. As I say, videos for the skirt and the cape part will be coming in the next week or so. So on the back, we're going to add some Vallejo White to Citadel Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to do the same as we did on the skirt. I'm going to highlight this. Now the areas where we've reapplied Deepkin Flesh, you're going to highlight those with this mix. In much the same way that we do normally, but again, you're not going to be just choosing the areas where the light is going to be catching it. It's just going to be all over. If there's a ridge to be highlighted, then highlight that. Make sure you leave some of the previous layer showing through so you get that nice two-tone effect there so the raised area is glowing a lot more. And finally, we're going to use some Vallejo White just on its own. I'm going to do the final highlights to this cape part. So you're going to be doing the extreme highlights on the cape with Vallejo White or whichever white you're using. And also picking out the edges and the ridges and creases in different places just to give them all that kind of bright white highlight. Next up we're going to use some Citadel Mornfang Brown. We're going to use this to paint the kind of courses on the front there. Let's just give this a good coat of Mornfang Brown. We can move on to the next layer. Found part of this is a bit of a pain to do. You've got kind of where the underside of the arm is because obviously it's hollow inside. So you have to kind of reach in there and try and get the brush inside it to paint some of the areas so that if you're looking through the holes at the sides or down the neck there, that you're not just seeing the undercoat. So they'd have to reach inside the brush and kind of stab that about to get a bit of the paint in there. Next, it's going to be a little tiny bit of Citadel Lead Belcher, just to paint the blade of the dagger. Now I'm going to be covering painting the base in this tutorial. I'll link that up here, of how I did the base for one of the other Nine Torn miniatures. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Balthazar Gold. I'm going to use this as the base for the bronzy effect on the dagger so we're going to do the handle and a little cross piece on the dagger there i was going to use this to paint the top and the bottom of the small sand timer which is hanging from her waist next up a bit of citadel rackarth flesh I'm going to use this to paint the jaw, which is jutting out from below the cape. So I need a tiny little bit of Rakarth flesh, which I'm not showing you here. There we go. Camera works a bit jumpy there, sorry about that. But if you can get that jaw nice and smooth with Rakarth flesh, then you're sound. Next up, a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to use this to paint the sand timer. Just give that a quick coat on each side and then we can go on to the shades. The first shade we're going to use is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. Now the thing with the shades in this is because we've already done the cape and the skirt, there's only a small amount of stuff left to do on the miniature really few layers on each thing. If you can try and get a good layer of shade on that jaw, then we'll go on to the next. Now it's going to be Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. You can use this to paint the Balthazar Gold on the handle of the dagger. We're also going to use it to do the Balthazar Gold on the sand timer as well. You can also cover the corset with a Grax Earth Shade 2. Just get that in the recesses and that'll bring out all the detail on there so that you can see that clearly. Right, 
like so. And what I've seen here is a little bit of Citadel Null Oil, which I decided not to show. But you can do that on the dagger and also on the bit that you use Mechanica Standard Grey on the Sand Timer. Now we're going to start working on the bone of the jaw. We're going to start with Citadel Rakarth Flesh. Because this is kind of a solid piece, you want to be thinking about where the light is catching it now. And just painting that on the sections where the light would hit it. Next up, we're going to use a little tiny bit of Vallejo White mixed with a little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone and just do a quick highlight on there. Don't want to be doing too much at all. Like so. Now we're going to start working on the corset. We're going to use some Citadel Mournfang Brown. There's lots of detail here, so I'm using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush just so that I can pick out all these details. Not risk going over them because they are very, very small. Little ridges and stuff like that on it. Also the pattern down the front and where the kind of strings are going across. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown with the Mournfang Brown. I'm just going to start highlighting the areas that we've just done. I want to make sure that you're trying to highlight the top edges of things where they will catch the light. And leaving some of that shade in the recesses and also the Mornfang brown on display. Like so. Now we're going to use just a little tiny bit of Citadel Balor Brown. We're just going to highlight the Mornfang Brown here. The colour is a little bit washed out on this part. I think because of the amount of white that's on the miniature, it was making the camera go a bit funky. But you can see the areas that I'm highlighting, no problem, which isn't too bad. That's just bringing all those details out. Next we're going to be using some Citadel Balthazar Gold. I'm going to reapply some of that colour to the top and bottom of the sand timer. Call it sand timer, the hourglass. And also the handle of the dagger. To highlight this we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rune Lord Brass. Just going to be highlighting the areas that are going to catch the light a bit more, so around the top edges and the top of that bottom lip on the hourglass, and also on the top edges of the bits of the dagger. Next there's a little bit of Sithil Canoptic Alloy. I'm just going to do one final little highlight on the areas that we've just put the Rune Lord Brass on. Just give that a final little bit of shine, like so. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide just to add a little bit of verdigris on the areas you've just been using the Rune Lord Brass and the Balthazar Gold. Not too much as you want to try and keep that shine and the highlights on there. You just want to be adding a little bit to the recesses to make it look like it has weathered and oxidised a little bit. Now we're going to use some Citadel Deepkin Flesh and we're just going to work on the arms. So you're going to reapply this, highlighting the areas as you would if it was catching the light. So mainly the top edges. I'm trying to keep the kind of glowing and all over highlighted effect to the skirt and the kind of cloak. Just so that we can get that looking a little bit different to the hands and the skin. Now 
I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the deepkin flesh. We're just going to highlight those hands and a little bit of arm that's showing. Like so. Now I'm going to work on the hourglass. I'm going to replace a little bit of that Mechanicus standard grey that we've covered with the shade. So you're going to be leaving the shade around the middle section and around the edges. So you're just going to be putting a little bit of Mechanicus standard grey on the bottom and the top parts of the bulbs. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Dawnstone to highlight. A little section on the top and a little section on the bottom. I'm going to leave some of that Mechanicus standard grey showing through though. So I'm going to use a little bit of Zandri dust. I'm going to put a tiny little line of this at the bottom there. I'm also going to do a tiny little bit at the bottom of the top half of the bulb. So there's a little bit of sand waiting to come down. Like so. You can reach in there and get that in the back as well. Finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo white. And this is going to be to do a little line of reflecting light down the side of the hourglass. So you can do a thin line going down the top, a thin line on the bottom too. And if you want to, you can add a few little spots of white to do light reflections in other areas. And that is the first Mermorn Banshee. Really pleased with how she turned out. But wasn't too sure when I first started doing it whether I liked it or not, but quite pleased with the end result. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.